What's up guys, Hot Noop here, and yeah, I've been pretty busy lately, but I've finally managed to, you know, find enough time and put in that time to, you know, work on the setcom clients or chat clients, so now that it behaves a little more like uh, Skype or whatever, um, and I think that I've gotten the client to a sort of beta acceptable level, so that's why I'm making this video, to show you guys um, the clients, what it can do, and a little bit on the back end to see uh, how you guys can sort of modify it. Um, so, uh, all you gotta do is go to setcom.net, top left hand corner, install our chat client, and it will download that. Once you have that downloaded, you just want to extract it somewhere. <coughs> and da -da -da, I just need to find it. I've already extracted. Alright, once you have it extracted, you need to right click or just go to properties actually. Go to compatibility, run as an administrator. Um, this is for the update process. Uh, you do need admin privileges. And uh, yeah, you just run it wherever. <coughs> and we'll download an update, and then you'll get the update installed in the new client version there. Um, there have been a couple updates already, so. That's why it just jumps ahead there to uh, 1 and 1. You can then log in. As you can see, I haven't really done much on the, the login. But username, password. Say you get the password wrong, it'll give you failed PW bad or whatever. Um, as you can see, there is a console window here. This is mainly for debugging. Um, Later on, I made you know I may sometime uh, close this or make it an option so that you can uh, open it up or whatever you know. Um, we'll see about that. Anywho, this is the client here. As you notice, there's no borders or anything, so it is not resizable. Um, I do need to put a minimize button on. <laughs> it's something I've been uh, procrastinating with. But we have the basics here. Um, the right is just for debugging. So you click your contact to talk with. And as you can see, I've added myself to my contacts list, so... And you get a little beep, blip noise, and you'll, you know, see some changes. And as you can see, I got a message from myself here. It's a little... weird when I'm talking to myself, because I get it twice. Um, but, you know, whatever. Minor bug, no one's going to send messages to themselves or the IM or whatever. I don't know. Um... Now the way the rules work with the whole client, uh, unlike the browser, you can have multiple devices, but only one of device, the device that is logged in will receive the message. So uh, when, I, when I mean multiple devices, I mean you got the chat client and then you also got the Android app. So um, let's say the message is received on the chat client and it won't be received on the Android app. So you can only really be logged in one, but you can log into uh, multiple. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, if you're not too concerned about the technical stuff, you know, you just ignore that. You shouldn't really run into any issues with it, um, as long as you don't multi-client or whatever. <coughs> but the goal here is to make it secure and sort of like Skype, but, you know, Skype is pretty insecure when you can uh, log in like 50 million times on th to the same account from 50 million different locations. So you don't know who's listening into your conversations. Um, that is why I have set it up so that only one of the clients can receive it. Um, <coughs> I will see about having a forced login feature so that, say, uh, you do run into an issue where someone is logged into your account without your permission and they're intercepting messages in which you would it would be evidence because you wouldn't be receiving them when you uh, say when someone sends you a message it would be sent to that other location so in which case I will probably add in to the settings here a feature to uh, clear all the sessions and force them to re-log in so that should help with security um, the contacts whoops Oops, 
Jesus, fuck. I'm, I'm, like, not reading shit right, so. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> I've already bugged it out, shit. As you can tell, there are a couple bugs still in there. I'm just going to show you guys. You can remove contacts like so. And it takes a while to update. Um, so you want to add contact. <coughs> um, with the Setcom client, obviously contacts can only be uh, added between uh, Setcom users. So. Uh, you can't just be like hotnoob at gmail.com, you gotta be hotnoob at uh, setcom.net. Uh, the name here, I'm not sure if I want to keep this or not, I'm, you know, this is really mainly for the email portion, so you just you can leave it blank, it'll do dick all on the chat client portion. And there we go. Uh, the next thing we got here is anonymous chat rooms. So how this works is, put in a name of a chat room and that name is the password, the encryption key and everything of the chat room. <coughs> so that ha that's how it stays anonymous. Um, the name is not transmitted to the server or anything like that. Um, <coughs> so it's completely anonymous. Like, completely. So, uh, Obviously, in this case, name isn't a very good password for your, or your your anonymous chat room, but you go like blah 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 as your chat room, and then uh, in order to s for someone to actually gain access to the chat room, they need to know the name of the room, and any users in the chat room that aren't on your contacts list will show up as a bunch of weird numbers um, <coughs> to protect anonymity. Uh, the next thing we got here is a private chat room, and this is with even more uh, security. How it works is you s say you do your chat room like so, and then now you need a pause password. I'll just leave it as undefined as the password. Now what happens is, say someone in your anonymous chat room leaks the name, but in the private chat room, say they leak the name in the private chat room, well, it means dick because you have a password on top of it. So, say someone's walking by and you're in an anonymous chat room, then they can grab the name of, off of it and join in, assuming that they're on the SecCom network. Um, but with a private, you know, you got that password protection. It's just, you know, the additional level of security and, yeah. Like, there's occasions where you want the high security private chat room, and occasions where you say, just want to chillax with your friends or invite some random people to talk with you, in which case you'd use the anonymous chat rooms. Uh, that's pretty much it for the features here. Uh, there, There is BB code in the chat, so let me show you some basic BB code, nothing that can compromise the security, such as URLs or images, all of those things. Um, I've purposely left out hyperlinking and stuff, so let's just go here, you see, bold, and <coughs> as you can see, all the processing is done on the server for the BB code to prevent injections and shit. But say you wanted to do, uh, send a person a link, notice how it is not hyperlinked, and this is because, you know, you don't want to accidentally click a link and all of a sudden, you know, you start downloading a virus. So this way, you know, you're paying more attention to the URL. Um, of course, that little extra bit of work, but it will keep you safer from running into any uh, viruses, malware, or uh, phishing sites. <coughs> That's why I do not have the links hyperlinked. Uh, yeah. So as you can tell, you know, I, you saw all those JavaScript errors earlier on. Uh, the client is... Uh, very strongly um, based on HTML and JavaScript, so it is pretty much a browser. But on there are some advantages of the client over the browser, which is the security increase, um, <coughs> and you know some speed increase and crap. Uh, on
on the browser, the encryption is done in JavaScript and all that sorts of shit. Uh, in the client, the encryption is done in uh, C, uh, C Sharp, so it is a lot faster and <clears throat> yeah, a lot more secure. Uh, for example, every time you refresh the browser, it has to update the keys and crap. But with the client, it updates it when you log in, and you can leave this client on for a very long time. The keys in the clients are only good <coughs> as long as you're locked in, right? Um, in the browser, you know, well, it's, you know, it's more or less about the same in security. But, uh, you know, this just is an extra level of security with the clients. Plus, you know, it's a hell of a lot smoother with the chat. Um, so, yeah, let's go into some of the background shit here. Uh, as you can see, we got the debug console, so you can see that everything that's going on, um, if you're interested at all. I'm going to go ahead here and close the clients and move on to the files. You'll notice that I have a folder here called HTML and blah blah blah. Um, so if you go in the HTML folder, you'll see you can open up files like uh, chatroomim.html and dot 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 dot. And you can see you get some basic HTML that you can play around with, you know, do some little formatting changes, whatever. Um, we also got the main screen. Uh, in the future, I am planning on making this a lot more mod friendly. Because right now, I just, you know, I got all the fucking JavaScript in here, and it's a real freaking mess. Um, so later on, I'll probably put this in a separate file so that uh, you don't have to, you know, uh, update your files every time that there's an update. So that'll probably be within the next couple updates. But say you want to create a mod, uh, let's just say, sure, call, copy the main screen, screen, and we're going to create a folder here called override, like so. And then you want to recreate the folder structure of the file that you want, so in this case, main, main, case, main screen. Ugh. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this uh, file. <coughs> and just for an example, I'm going to delete this and say, uh, for a ride stuff. And save it like so. And then open up the clients. So, there we go. Now it overrides the HTML that was in uh, that file. Um, this works for multiple things. Uh, I'm not sure about images yet, but it should work for JavaScript and style sheets. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty much how it works. You know, you can create your own mods fairly easily that way. Uh, put in, uh, I don't know, whatever you want, you know, vamp up the design or something. Um, just to make you know, make yourself more at home, I guess. <coughs> and uh, these mods, like, you do have to be aware that I can't give any guarantees that if you do download a third-party mod, like, say, someone creates a mod for it, I can't guarantee that they don't put any viruses or malware into it, so please be aware of that when you, you know, copy someone's override folder over. Um, <coughs> but, you know, hopefully... You guys won't be dumb enough to <laughs> download any malware mods or whatever. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the Seccom clients. Um, feel free to try it out. Uh, it should work with brand new users and stuff. I've tested everything, so uh, hopefully when you do use it, it goes flawless. If not, you guys can always contact me and just, you know, leave me uh, a message, some screenshots or something. Um, <coughs> if it does crash for some odd reason, there will be a file showing up in here that will be called uh, criticalerrors.log um, that will, you know, show any errors where uh, the client just fucking crashes, which I haven't seen in a long time. And as long as you're running it as admin, it also should not crash. 
Anywho, um, yeah, I've only tested this on Windows 7, so if you have got XP, please, you know, let me know if it works <laughs> on XP. So, uh, yeah. And that's pretty much it. Please subscribe.